it is happening, you're perfectly happy for them to bring in foreign workers from China or other places? Uh, I will always want a circumstance that puts Australian workers first. We have got more than $500 billion of mining investment in the pipeline, so we are going to face skill shortages and there will be some foreign workers involved, but I'll always want to have arrangements that get workers the skills they need and the opportunities they need, uh, Australian workers from all parts of the country, because so much of this industry is going to be about flying in and flying out, as well as it being about people who move to some of these towns to get an opportunity, because it's not just you know in the mine it's actually you know associated with the township near the mine uh, doing all of the catering and other work that needs to be done okay let's go to another subject completely different we've got a question from Jeff Thomas Prime Minister my name's Jeff Thomas I'm a Vietnam veteran I'm a plumbing contractor and the proud father of a gay son almost two years ago I asked Tony Abbott whether he'd be prepared to treat gay and lesbian Australians with the dignity and respect that he would accord all other Australians. Now, over that period, he hasn't changed his view, but I believe that you have. The country now knows that you stand side by side and as one with Tony Abbott and the extremist group, the Australian Christian Lobby on this issue. Could you please explain to me that in a country that prides itself on freedom, equality and tolerance, how it is that denying same-sex couples the right to marry is in any way, in any sense, fair, just or consistent with the way Australians think today. Thank you for your question and I can uh, hear the passion in your voice and the concern for your son and so um, you know to, to hear from you is an important part of this evening. I am going to take a different view from you though and I do want to explain my view. Um, you know I, I of all people um, and I think people uh, in this room and beyond this room know a bit about my personal life. Um, I, of all people, uh, would sit before you and say, I think that you can have a relationship of love and commitment and trust and understanding that doesn't need a marriage certificate associated with it. I mean, that's my life experience and so I'm speaking from that life experience. Uh, it then becomes a question, you know, if you believe as I do that uh, people can have, you know, deep and committed relationships without a marriage certificate. It becomes an issue about, you know, how are we going to deal with this cultural institution of long standing in Australian society and are we going to try and change it to fit circumstances where people are in love and deeply committed but don't fit the current Marriage Act? Or are we going to grow up new traditions and norms that embrace that? I've taken a particular view about it. You know, it's a you know, view that some people might look at me and th think oh, it's an odd one for her to hold, but it is a view I hold and I hold very deeply. Uh, so that's how I'll exercise my vote as an individual when these things come before the Australian Parliament. But I've certainly become persuaded that it's not for me uh, to tell my Labor colleagues or anybody else um, what they should believe and how they should vote when that comes to the Parliament. So I've ensured that when it does, Labor people are able to vote any which way they choose in accordance with you know, their heart, their conscience, their family, their community, and I suspect large numbers of them won't vote the same way as me. Have you changed your view on this, as Jeff Thomas suggested? Uh, I haven't changed my view on uh, the Marriage Act. Uh, I have ensured, and this is, I think, a change from when I was last on Q&A, uh, in the time in between, I've ensured that there's a conscience vote for Labor members. Let's go back to our question. What, what makes you say the Prime Minister's changed her view? I've always believed you to be a, uh, a compassionate person. You belong to a political party that, that tells us, and we believe, most people would believe, are, are the architects of all great social change in this country. 
to me, you sit there as a Prime Minister that's abandoned that basic principle of treating every Australian equal under the law. My son deserves to be treated equally under the law. John Howard changed this law eight years ago. What he did is took a group of law-abiding citizens and put them outside the law. What you're doing, Prime Minister, is keeping them there. OK, we're going to take that as a comment. Now, you're watching a special Q&A. We've got quite a few other questions to go. It's with the Prime Minister, Julie Gillard, as you can see. The next question is a video. It comes from Margaret Alm in Eltham, Victoria. With border control in shambles, there's now an open door entry for people smuggled asylum seekers. Would it not be time for the government to start issuing refugees with restricted refugee protection visas rather than the current and very generous permanent resident visas? This would make Australia a less attractive destination for those who predominantly flee chaos and economic deprivation rather than their government's persecution. Thank you. Julie Gillard. I don't agree that these visas, uh, what we would call temporary protection visas, uh, the sort of technical term if you like, I don't agree these visas would make the kind of difference that your viewer thinks. We used to have temporary protection visas under the Howard government and the evidence was that they didn't make a difference to arrival numbers and even more disturbingly the evidence was because uh, people were getting temporary protection visas and there were no family reunion rights that you were starting to see more women and children on boats trying to uh, join husbands and fathers who had already come here. And I think we all know how dangerous those boat journeys are. We've seen too much evidence of the tragedy that it ends up in uh, to ever want any part of our system to encourage uh, women and kids to get onto boats. And so I just don't agree with your viewer. We do have permanent protection visas. I, of course, would like to see changed arrangements for people smuggling, but we haven't been able to get those through the parliament. Um, we've got a web question from Richard Fay. We've got a hand up the back there. We'll get a microphone up to that gentleman. Uh, Richard Fay in St Ives, New South Wales. Why have illegal boat smugglers been allowed to set up operations within Australia, which can be located by news reporters, but not by the federal police? <laughs> Well, uh, to, be, to be fair to our uh, federal police colleagues, um, as people would have seen from uh, Commissioner Negus's public statements, uh, the uh, man who was the subject of the Four Corners report uh, had been the subject of investigation and inquiry by the police. Uh, but, so why didn't they arrest him? Well, as Commissioner Negus uh, said, and these are operational decisions for the police, uh, you know, the government doesn't make them and we shouldn't make them. Uh, the operational decision that the police made was that they did not have enough evidence uh, to uh, issue an arrest warrant or to detain him at our border. Have they told you that they knew that he was living in Canberra, a very short distance away from their headquarters? Uh, what, they've, what they've told me is the same as what Commissioner Negus has said publicly, uh, that they uh, made some operational decisions about what evidence they had at their disposal and the standards of proof are obviously different uh, between putting a TV show to air, and I'm not trying to be dismissive of the TV show in saying that, but I think it's just common sense that there's different standards from putting a TV show to air uh, to police getting together a body of evidence that they think will get a prosecution up in court beyond reasonable doubt. Uh, our federal police have uh, you know, arrested a number of people smugglers and a number have been convicted. They're now behind bars and a number more will face the courts. And yet this man was um, allowed to carry on a people smuggling business in Australia in Canberra, a short distance away from the Federal Police, and I put it to you, they didn't know he was there. Well, that's not what Commissioner Negus has uh, said publicly about the uh, police's uh, endeavours and investigations in relation to... So they didn't know he was there? 
Well, I'm just referring you to what Commissioner Negus said I know publicly. He's, uh, he hasn't said that he knew he was there. Uh, well, they've certainly, Commissioner Negus has spoken publicly about uh, various uh, inquiries that were made uh, and activities by the police and their ultimate conclusion that they didn't have a sufficient body of evidence to arrest him. Would you be surprised to hear that they had lost him and didn't know where he was? Look, these, these are, look, I, I, don't, I don't really, at the end of the day, understand where the questioning takes you. I don't, as Prime Minister, sit in my office and say to the Federal Police, oh, I'm going to take it into my head to direct you to address, you know, arrest that person who I think is a drug smuggler or that person who I think has child pornography or that person who's a people smuggler. Uh, the police do these things as police, not under the political direction of government. They make operational decisions. Um, in the same way, if uh, violence uh, erupted outside here tonight, the Q&A audience, I'm sure, wouldn't be engaged in that. Uh, you wouldn't expect Barry O'Farrell to be there conducting traffic. The local police would come and do it. We've got a questioner up the back. Prime Minister, I'd like to refer to that gentleman's question down the end there. Marriage equality is about 50% one thing and 50% the other. 50% putting a ring on it. <laughs> and 50% realising that these are real issues affecting real people. It's about a transparency, it's about clarity, it's about a depth of understanding about these issues that are affecting these people. In 2009, the Australian Human Rights Commission recommended that the Marriage Act should be changed to accommodate same-sex marriage to promote both equality of the law and equality of society in general. OK, I'm sorry, I'm going to take that as a comment because we have dealt with this subject and we've heard the Prime Minister's answer can, on this can one. Can I, I just yes, say you can, you can. Just, just one thing? Uh, the, our government has uh, amended federal laws from Social Security all the way through uh, to equalise treatment of same-sex couples. Now, I know you would say, well, that's, you know, that's OK, but you should also do the Marriage Act, and I'm going to have a different view from you about that. Many of my Labor colleagues would agree with you. But we have uh, entered into that work to ensure equality in things like superannuation <laughs> so that you don't miss out because you're a same-sex couple. Do you have any concerns at all some of that might be unravelled in Queensland? Well, I mean, they can't unravel federal law no. like superannuation and social security law and immigration law. That's not possible.